Well, next, did you ever get in trouble for drawing when you were supposed to be paying attention in math class? Well, Ted Taylor did, and now he's proud of it. Teresa Bush pays a visit to this successful portrait artist who often does his work at a Nashville antique shop. Okay, she looks a little, she's got some beautiful colors. Ted Taylor has a gift. He sees things differently than most of us. Okay, okay, beautiful, beautiful. It's like he's a human projector. His eyes see images, shapes, shadows, and colors, and his mind processes them all. Then his hands use chalk to make them come alive on a blank white canvas. And if you didn't know better, you'd think you were staring straight into the person's face. It's as close as creating like God as you can to me, because that's what he did. Created man out of dirt, and that's close as I'm going to get, because that's what we're made of. Those, the substance that I use is a dirt substance. Chalk, pastel comes from dirt, and you rub it, and I'm packing it on, because first, them colors are different before they go on. Sometimes they're green, sometimes they're blue, a lot of colors go on, and then the natural color of the person's skin comes on there later. So actually, I'm almost building something in dirt. Ted's love for art began when he was about four years old. His first tools weren't fancy French chalk like he uses today. All he had back then was a notebook and some crayons, the fat ones, five to a box. But even at that young age, he knew he wanted more. I used to take out the trash next door neighbor when I was four or five years old, and she'd give me a dime, and I couldn't wait to run down the corner to get little crayons, you know. So I used to save my change to take out the latest trash, and one day I got the 65 cent to get the big box of crayons that had all the colors. Then came elementary school. Ted says he wanted to draw more than study, and teachers often scolded him for it. But sometimes it paid off, like when they needed help with their art projects. Even though I got in trouble, the teachers would select me for doing the art uh, in the hallways, and they said I could pick my own little crew and put them together, and I do the Christmas pageants, you know, where we do the uh, Santa Claus, the manger, and everything. I had my chance to be the director or chief artist, and I show him how to cut it out. We had lights to go up on it. It was just beautiful. Then Ted found John Nagy on the TV, the granddaddy of all art teachers. His TV series, Learn to Draw on TV, changed Ted's life. He learned a lot of techniques, style, and how to appreciate art. He was a just a charcoal artist. Came on TV early Saturday morning. Kids, everybody watching cartoons, I want to watch John Nagy. Because he's drawing, sketching, you know, drawing bridges and stuff and showing how to shadow just with one color, just charcoal, black and white. And he's showing how to rub with his fingers and stuff. And I just was enthused about it. And I just caught him every Saturday morning and I started like that. Over the years, Ted has drawn thousands of portraits and he dabbles in oil paintings from time to time. But the most memorable event happened when he got to meet former First Lady Rosalind Carter. They heard about my pastel work and portraits, so they offered me to come to Atlanta to an event. They opened up a new hotel, and they were going to auction off one of my paintings of her. And they wanted her to sign it and wanted me to meet her. So I said, gladly. Most of Ted's work is of people he doesn't know, but every now and then he does take time to draw someone in his family. These are two of his grandsons. He made it for his daughter, but he just can't bear the thought of parting with it, at least not yet. In fact, he keeps on thinking up excuses to hold on to it, like for the use of it in our story. Now that Ted's children are grown and he's retired from the aircraft industry, he's focusing more and more on his art. And believe it or not, Ted says he still has room to grow. Every day I'm still learning uh, how to do it better, how to be more skillful about it, how to be more appreciative about it, and how to share it. That's very important, how to share my work. I try to skill myself as far as managing my time and without it being overloaded, but just balancing my time, you know, without pressure. I think one of the main things I find is people have has to learn to work without pressure. If you can work without pressure and be more relaxed, you can get a lot of things done. 
But Ted does put some pressure on himself. That's just his nature, as he never, ever lets a portrait leave his hands until he thinks it's, well, picture perfect. And he doesn't plan on slowing down anytime soon. I'm gonna draw until I just can't draw anymore. I'm living my dream.